Morning Tribe. It is Friday. So happy Friday, everyone. We have just finished the last week of three weeks of hypertrophy in this mesocycle and we are absolutely hammered. So we're pretty stoked. Uh, today, we've got some huge topics to talk about. We're talking about how to train with back pain. And this is a very a, a topic that's close to home for both Rad and I because we've both suffered spinal fractures uh, in our life. And uh, we're also gonna answer a couple of other questions. We're giving a couple of big shout outs to some of the guys crushing it both in the gym right here and uh, on our online tribe. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. We're back. We're back. We're back. How are you, Rad? Yeah, I'm good, man. How are you? I am absolutely psyched for today. I'm, uh, I'm very excited about doing the last high volume deadlift session because <laughs> mm -hmm. doing 10 reps on deadlifts has been brutal. Uh, and my back and everything is just um, ha feeling it, you know. I've been complaining all week that I've hardly been able to stretch because my lower back, which is very on topic for today, um, really tightens up. I've still got a lot of in inhibition. Uh, my brain creates inhibitors down there because I've had quite a serious spinal injury and uh, it's very hard to unlock. So something we'll talk about today. And um, how about you, mate? How are you feeling? You good? You yeah, good. How, yeah, yeah. How's the program treating you? Yeah, man, I mean, my body feels amazing. I've, I mean, I'm sore, of course, but uh, the gains that we've had in the past few weeks from, this, uh, from these new six-week cycles is unreal. Rad's the, on cloud nine. He's had quite a few comments about the fact that he looks a bit buffer than usual. I'm on fucking cloud nine. <laughs> he has legit. He's, he sits at the front of the, uh, his, his, his work desk is at the front of the gym. And so I've heard a couple of members saying, mate, you're looking buff. So uh, yeah, it's good, it's yeah. good. But it's true, the, the, the new six week phase of the foundation movement system that we've adopted this year as our mesocycles uh, is, uh, it's been a big move and uh, it's, it was really tough. You know, we do the prep week and that's really our testing week where we set the, um, the, the, the uh, parameters for what we're gonna be aiming for throughout the program cycle, the mesocycle. Then we do three hypertrophy phases, which is all about building muscle mass and density to support us for the strength phase. And then we have a deload phase. And then we're tapering off, uh, just to give you a little bit of insight into less hypertrophy, more strength. And we're gonna finish off the last mesocycle, the fourth mesocycle of the program at the end of the year before we break up for the Christmas vacation again uh, on speed and power and uh, explosive strength. So um, it's gonna be really good. It's gonna be really good. All you guys in the Movement Mastermind, look out, you're in for an absolute treat this year with our program cycles. Yeah, it's gonna be unreal. It's uh, a lot of fun, a lot of research has gone into it. Um, not just from education, but from uh, personal research and development with us training and trying it out ourselves getting it to a standard that we're really happy with and uh, it's delivering amazing results. Yeah, absolutely. And on that, quick shout out to um, Marcus Denny from the online tribe. He has uh, posted a video today of him nailing the 18 minute stretch routine and he's making really, really big gains and he's most importantly feeling the results, which is so important. This is our whole ethos. Uh, health is about how your body performs and feels, not just how it looks. The looks are a side effect to moving well. So. Uh, good on you, Marcus, and thank you very much for sharing your journey so far. It is really inspiring to see. And another one real quick from our tribe here in the gym, um, Paul Melhush has basically asked me some really good questions overnight um, around nutrition. He was on the weekly AMA, not last week because we didn't have one the week before where we talked a lot about nutrition. And the quality of questions that are coming through from you guys in the gym tribe right now um, really uh, makes us feel good that you're you're understanding everything and you're moving forward and you're, you're putting the work in which is most important you know because this journey does require a lot of commitment results require a lot of commitment and when the quality of questions are elevating we know that we're doing a really good job um, yep. isn't that right yeah absolutely absolutely it's uh, it's really cool to see should we move on to our yep. question let's yeah. do it so <clears throat> question today is from uh, from Christian Hansen from Chris and the question is would asking about the 18 minute routine 
Would this be great to help me with my five discs in my lumbar that have bulged? I have had one surgery on my L4. Thanks in advance. So the first thing we should do, yeah, I only forgot to do this, but I'll do it, is our disclaimer is that we're not chiropractors, we're not physiotherapists. Um, we're basically just a couple of chumps that don't, you know, don't really know anything. We're just on, we just, we got YouTube and so we can do whatever we want now. Um, just give us Cal, one sec, Cal, there's Cal, someone out there just that just needs a little bit of... Um, so, no, of course, that is not the case. We are personal trainers, and as personal trainers, we are not uh, qualified to diagnose injuries. It's, a, it's not in our scope of practice, but we've got a hell of a lot of experience. So we're going to talk about our experience now. This should all be taken as um, tongue-in-cheek. This is not to be taken to the bank. Um, you know, if you have any major problems in your lower back, especially with disc bulges, always go and see a professional, uh, go and see a chiropractor, go and see a physio, yeah. get their advice. comes but down to that alignment with a good team of, of experts. And we've done that and we work with a team of experts. Uh, and we've also had some very, very, um, I guess, uh, on point personal experiences, which yeah. we'll talk about quickly. So give well, us a quick uh, well, bit well, of background. All that said, all that said, we, Yanni and I, I fractured my spine when I was in the army in 2009, wow. and Yanni fractured his spine much earlier than that when he was a kid in Nin a horse riding 1988. accident. 1988. 1988. So we've both had to rehabilitate fractured spines, and since we've become personal trainers, with the amount of people that we were dealing with that had injuries, we aligned ourselves over the years. We went through a lot of different practitioners, chiropractors and physios and masseuses until we came to a couple of really, really good ones. And when I say good ones, I mean exceptional. I've worked with, I can't even count how many chiropractors I've had treat me over the years. And Tom Cartwright, who we work with now, is exceptional. He's on another level. Uh, and he is a chiropractor, so he absolutely knows what he's talking about when it comes to the spine. Uh, then the same thing goes with physios. We've got a couple of amazing physios that we work with, Phil White and Leroy Lobo, um, two um, leaders in their field. Uh, and also Phil is also a masseuse as well. So when and a sports what, and exercise scientist. Yeah. So what we talk about, we we have really great relationships with these people. They're not just people that we send people to. They're friends of ours. They're people that we hang out with, um, talk through. They respect us. We respect them. So we do have more knowledge than the average personal trainer. And then we've got personal experience. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so going. Um, so my um, personal experience, I've got what's called a pars defect or a pars fracture in my L4 um, vertebra. And that uh, causes me, has caused me a hell of a lot of pain and problems over the years. And I've had to um, deal with that and learn how to overcome the pain and discomfort. Um, at its worst, when I got um, out of the army, I couldn't stand on my feet for more than about 10 or 15 minutes without being in excruciating pain. It was a massive problem being a personal trainer at Fitness First because I was on my feet all day long. Um, and I was having to sit down during my personal training sessions on benches and coach people that way because I was just in so much pain. Um, now, uh, eight years later or six years later, uh, I'm in better shape than I've ever been and have zero pain. Um, I forget that I even had a back problem. So that's my own personal experience. Yanni? Yeah, my experience was from falling off a horse. I was lucky in one regard that I was very young at the time, but it was quite a severe injury. I, was, I got caught in the stirrup and I got dragged and my spine was rotated and compressed. So it created what's called a, spinal fr a spiral fracture. Uh, and it's something that we had to learn how to overcome in, on both regards. I suffered most of my discomfort through my teenage years. Uh, once it all settled down, my body adapted to it, tightened and locked up my hip area so that it was very hard to develop mobility in my hamstrings and lower back. Uh, but that's what the brain tends to do when you suffer a severe trauma like that. Usually it will just lock the area down to allow it to heal. Uh, and then you've got to work extremely hard to re-unlock it. And, and it's not so much about lengthening tendons, it's about um, removing the in inhibitor that the brain has created on a neurological level. So uh, Rad and I have become, I would even go as far as to say masters at that, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Yeah. Uh, and we've done it with a lot of other people as well. Uh, to, to, to get on um, really onto the topic because we don't have a lot of time uh, and we could really talk about this for days. The key to, in my experience, to um, overcoming spinal injury is movement. 
And this is something that uh, is, is debated. You know, if you look at heavily, um, debated. heavily debated, if you look at the work of Dr. Stuart McGill, who's a, a, an authority on, on the spine, um, he's a he's a researcher. He would say that the, 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 the movement on a on a disc level should be limited because it delaminates the spine. And over time, that causes a breakdown of the the tissue that holds the disc gel together and eventually that when that tissue becomes thin and delaminated it is more prone and susceptible to disc bulge but then you look at the work of someone like Sarah Key who's a practicing physiotherapist who's been a practicing physiotherapist for over 20 years or maybe even 30 years I mean, it was 40 years 40 years um, she has a more hands-on experience and she can she in in many ways would probably argue that movement on that um, uh, segmentational level is critical to the health of the disc because you know you want um, uh, oxygen you want nutrients getting delivered into those discs and uh, moving around there and it's super important that you keep it moving now we've worked with people on both levels of the spectrum who um, who argue both sides very compelling in a, in a very compelling way uh, but when it comes down to our own personal experience when i followed the concept of okay lock the spine down don't let it move uh, and then perform heavy movements and things like that i felt terrible and i was very so I. I was very vulnerable and more yes. susceptible to injury the moment i broke outside of that plane I was injured immediately. And that could happen if I was squatting 70 kilos or 170 kilos. It could happen if I was deadlifting 50 kilos or 150 or 200 kilos. It didn't seem to matter. Yeah. Um, since we adopted the movement concept and moving the spine every single day, both under load and under no load, just um, uh, using our own body movements, spinal integration movements, uh, we have experienced a much bigger result. Like, what's your, what's your? Um, yeah, well, I mean, my best, um, you know, lifts when we were really going heavy was I did a hundred and seventy kilogram barbell back squat, uh, and that was double my body weight, and I did a hundred and eighty kilo deadlift for five reps. Um, and you can see it all on Instagram if you want to go back and have a look and <laughs> see if I'm telling the truth. But uh, that was when I was at my strongest and that was when I was um, training the way that you... Str st strongest at squatting and strongest deadlifting. Strongest at squatting and deadlifting. Yeah. That, and I'm um, way stronger now in so many other areas. But yeah, we were really doing this whole principle of you lock the spine in place and everything. And I was in pain all the time. I was in discomfort. It just felt like shit. And then we started to explore much more about mobility and when you you know you're starting to get into spinal mobility where you're learning to isolate areas of the spine and really create movement through the spine man all the pain just went and um my personal experience i would never ever ever tell anybody to to lock the spine in place and avoid movement and avoid movement yeah. that's not what i would do so going to your question um uh, Chris is uh, will this help I think it absolutely will help 100% uh, you know especially the parts of the mobility of the loaded mobility routine where you're going to learn how to do these spinal waves and spinal mobilization like that's I think that's really critical for helping um, disc bulges considering that the discs do regenerate over time if you do the right thing for them um, I think it takes a, about a two or three years before the discs I've been are, told three years and I, I, yeah. I haven't read that in a textbook I that's come from sources where that I've worked with um, uh, osteopaths and and chiropractors yeah, I thought it was two, about three years that yeah. the, the, the discs um, fully regenerate themselves. So what they mean is that if you do the right things, that bulging discs will heal and will fix themselves. So the things you have to look out for is um, you definitely don't do loaded flexion when you've got bulging discs because you think about it, you know, you've got your discs like this that are sitting on top of each, sorry, the vertebrae that are sitting on top of each other and the disc is in the middle and it's bulging out, it's burst and it's bulging out. So when you put that lateral force on it, so if you're putting the spine into flexion and it comes down like this, if you're loading and pulling it forward, it causes the bulge to be, um, you know, exacerbated. It really yeah. pushes it out more. So you've got to avoid... <coughs> Um, certain things, but um, 
the idea to like to me it, it just seems madness to think I've got an injury I need to not move and this is you know this is even a really new like the pioneers in physiotherapy they're not getting people to put their arms in a plaster cast anymore for injuries that only five years ago they were getting people in plaster cast because what they're learning is that the atrophy that happens in the muscle causes permanent um, damage to the joint yeah. where the joint can no longer uh, extend to full extension anymore when you lock an arm in a cast for six or nine months and so for injuries where they used to put you in cast they're actually putting like wire um, little cabling and stuff in the joint to hold it together and they're encouraging very light loaded movement like days after surgery yeah. basically as soon as the inflammation's going down and that's a watch this space thing because like we had one of our clients joe who did her injury yeah. and i was asking where's her cast and she went to one of these um surgeons that, that does this this one she goes oh no 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 there's no cast there's a um you know there's a couple of little pins in my arm um and she fractured her elbow i can't remember which bone do you remember which bone she fractured Richard? The ulna. No. she snapped the ulna yeah i think she snapped the ulna um so it's, it's an injury that you would have had your elbow put in a yeah. cast 10 years ago yeah. Um, so yeah, movement is life. Stillness is death. Um, if you if you put an arm in a plaster cast for nine months, take it out. It'll be atrophied. Put the arm in a plaster cast for um, an indefinite amount of time, and eventually you'll achieve necrolysis. The arm will die. Yeah. Um, it'll die, and it will have to be amputated. So movement's life. Stillness is death. Yeah. Absolutely. Same goes for the spine. And yeah, that's exactly right. But it, we say this with a grain of salt because it's it is very important that you align yourself with the right team around you so that you can get the right guidance. And it's very hard for us to sit here in our armchairs and uh, and tell you exactly what to do. I, I'm working with a gentleman at the moment who's one of my one-on-one -on -one clients who came in here told by four surgeons he needed a discectomy and disc fusion uh, in his lumbar because he was so far gone. And um, he's deadlifting now and, and doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, and, and you know, like, it's, uh, he, he's doing Jefferson curls and loaded flexion and all sorts of stuff. And he was full of disc bulges and everything. So it's a mat, but, but, but we built him up to that over and he's, three. And he's 56 years he's 56 old. 56 well. years old. We, there, there were workouts that he did in the gym here where he did, he lifted a very light weight and his back spasmed so bad that he was on painkillers and couldn't go to work for five days. Yeah. And we've gone from that to zero pain, no surgery. Yeah. And um, being able to do things that if you spoke to, the uninformed um, old school expert, they would tell you absolutely no way. If you've got disc bulges, you've got to get yeah. surgery. You can't do this, you can't do that. And you're never deadlifting or exercising again. The other day, his, his wife told us at our Christmas party that they had some huge pots delivered to the house that weighed about 80 kilos and he comfortably picked them up and moved them across the balcony, which is an awkward object to carry at, at that weight. For and a 57 for year old. 57 year old who had serious spinal issues when he came into us three years ago. But the key here is that we built him up to that over a three year period. We didn't start him on those really radical exercises and it was a slow progression and we took our time. Now, um, to, ra to wrap it all up, it's, it, it's, it's very, very uh, important that you continue to move, but it's also very important that you continue to shelf your ego and get and do the right movement for you at this stage in your progression and your rehab. Yeah, and that's the thing. You have to use pain and the sensations that your body give you as feedback. You know, like you might. I um, like to say discomfort, not pain. Yeah, okay, if discomfort. It get, if it gets to the, uh, to pain, you've gone way too far. Yeah. So, you know, in the, um, in the mobility tutorials, so Chris, going back to your question, you know, will these routines be good for you? Absolutely. But when you watch me demonstrating the routine in the video, you will quite often not be going as far as I will. And you'll just be like attempting to get the best that you can, the best range of motion that you can in the required stretch, but without pushing to that point of pain and uh, using discomfort as feedback. If it's painful the next day, if it's uncomfortable the next day, you've probably gone a little bit too far and you need to back it off. And you, you need to understand that there's a journey going on. You know, this goes back to, um, you know, a chat that we had last week where we were talking about, um, you know, the, the process of getting, I can't remember what the exact topic of conversation was, but we were talking about how you have to let go of who you are and become the new person. Yeah. And it, it's a process. It's a massive process. So, you know, if you've got five disc bulges and you've had surgery, then that is a byproduct, a result of the actions that you've taken in your life. Now, 
all genetic disorders aside, yes, I respect that sometimes people have a genetic disorder, but it counts for such a small amount of the population. It really does. Yeah. And if you're in that minute one to two percent of the population, um, you know, that's a shame and you really definitely need to work with us with an expert there. But let's say you're in the other 98 or 99 percent of the population, which 98 or 99 percent of you are, then it's your choices that have led you to this point. You've made choices. You've lived your life in a certain way that caused you to be a person that has bulging discs. Now, to become that person that doesn't have bulging discs, it's going to t there's going to be a process that's involved. It's not going to be, a, oh, I'm going to get an 18-minute stretching routine and I'll start it and two months later I'm going to be fine. Yeah. And it's also not going to be a thing where you can go, okay, you know, I've, I've made this decision. I'm going to really go for it. I'm going to smash myself into, into the body that I want to be. No, it's not going to be like that. That is going to lead to injury, guaranteed. It's going to be a slow, steady process trusting the process, believing in the result, working with people that you trust because, you know, they have achieved a good result themselves or have demonstrated that they can get a good result with their clients. Um, and then you just put your, your, uh, your faith in their hands and follow the process and allow it to unfold naturally. Yeah, absolutely. Now, there are a few key things, and I'll talk directly to you, Chris. There are a few key things that you need to focus on with your disc bulges. Hydration is critical, so you must make sure that your body is really well hydrated. Um, as as best possible with good quality water, nothing else. Uh, you need to also make sure that you're supplementing a few things like curcumin is a great supplement for inflammation, so is uh, omega-3 fish oils. Make sure that you're giving your body all of the nutrients that it needs to restore itself and heal itself. Uh, zinc is another really, really important supplement to take uh, while you're trying to repair tissue in the body. And then also just make sure that, yeah, you're doing the right things. Like um, a lot of the time, disc bulges are caused just by um, excessive weight gain because it, when you've got a big belly, it's, it, it affects your, the, the, the posture in your lumbar. Now, I don't know your personal circumstances uh, so, and, and I'm making a generalization here, but the, one of the best things that you can do to keep your spine healthy is to stay at a healthy weight and a healthy body composition. So nutrition plays a key role in that. So make sure that you're hitting this from all angles because I know what it's like. At worst with my spine, the area of my spine that was fractured has nerves passing through it that basically feed my testicles, my nuts. And at my worst point, every movement, even the smallest movement, felt like someone was kicking me in the balls. And for any man out there, women are probably laughing. For the men, <coughs> you know what that feels like. It's horrible. I couldn't move. I, I literally couldn't move. Even talking to Rad now would set it off. Uh, so I know what it's like when you've got a really, really painful back. But um, yeah, you, you have to, it, it's not going to be a stretching routine that solves it. It's going to be a complete lifestyle transformation. Mm. And that's what Rad's tipping on there. You need to become the person you need to be that does not have back problems anymore. And it will start with a complete mindset shift. So really, really um, uh, great question today. And you've, you've got the intermittent fasting diet as well. That's uh, if, absolutely. If, if you've got the 18 minute routine. What, what's our time? Where are uh, we? We're, we're done. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've got a story with a, a friend who basically um, healed a fragment in his spine that was floating around through uh, what we believe intermittent fasting, the we'll upregulation of cellular Monday. autophagy. Yeah. We can talk about that later. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely explore the concepts of intermittent fasting, cellular autophagy, because that's going to help. Keep yourself well hydrated. Get a really clean diet going and uh, yeah, become the guy that you need to be to not have disc bulges anymore, mate. And we're here for you. We're here to support you. Reach out if you need it. Awesome. Have a great weekend. Have a great we'll weekend, guys. All, uh, Good weekly wrap up. Yeah. We'll Take see care. You all next week. Bye bye. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.